Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Pyanodons playthrough. Fantastic, Mr. Ghost. And I am in planning land. At least that's what I'm calling it today. It may change next episode. But speaking about episodes, last time I spun up these silly little mice called Cotton Guts and our space horses, Ulrichs, MKO2s. And unfortunately, that's all I had time for, but that's kind of how it goes. So the bees are gonna have to wait. I wanted to knock these out because obviously I have these upgrade projects and I wanna get them off the docket and kind of clean house a little bit. The Arkwoods are a tough build. It's a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna knock out things that I see fit, you know, for peace of mind. So these mousies here were a pain only because of the Reina and that's on me, that's my fault. Also, I have low tech for the Reina seeds and the Reina plants. So I fixed it and I was able to get the Cotton Gut MKO2 spun up fairly quick. What I did is I separated the Reina build out for, and it's focused on Reina. And this is kind of what you have to do. If you need Reina or if you need a plant or you need a seed or you need both, you're gonna have to have two builds because the plants or the seeds are gonna be consumed and it leaves nothing for the process. So it ends up just, it, it kind of goes like a washing machine. One process will fill up the you know desired requirement and then the other process has to spin up again and then kick out the extras. So it takes tw you know obviously twice as long in that case. And here is the Reina Seeds build that I, I basically took the one machine, doubled it, moved some pipes around, which is not fun sometimes, and this is the Reina Seeds. I, I have a feeling I'm gonna need them for the bio hub here, as well as the Reina. Uh, so I'm gonna leave these in here and we should be good to go. So again, the problem here is that the Reina Seeds were needed for the food here and the Reina plant is needed by the cotton guts on the, it's, it's turning the cubs into studs, MKO2. So between these two machines here, well, the Prandium and the food, I wasn't getting any progress. It was so slow. And I was able to upgrade all the cotton guts. And here are all the old MKO1s, 789. I probably had some left over from when I spun them up last time. So that's how many I pulled out of there. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do with these except turn them into biomass. But like I said, I don't wanna throw away creatures because this could help spin up, let's say something happens, whatever. I have these extra little guys lying around. Now these space horses are a real pain in the rear. And the limiting factor here is getting the food to this build. And I could do a food build within this area here, the bio hub, but I really don't want to. This is something I'm okay with letting it sit and I need 16 MKO2 Ulrichs for each of these little guys right here, the corrals. I've upgraded the breeding complexes on both builds. I have a bone meal build and a Corlex only build. So that's four, eight, 12 uh, times two is 24. And the corrals take 16. And I'm almost, I got two more here. I'm focusing on the bone meal one first because that's used in a lot of stuff to whip up creatures sometimes. And then I'll go to the Ulrich build and I'll upgrade that last. So it's kind of a interesting little setup here. As you can see, I have a belt loop here and that's because this machine here may not get food. As you can see, I'm waiting for some now. But this machine, as you can see here, it's working. So the belt loop allows me to keep a minimum amount of MKO2 Ulrichs from having to go through this whole process. I don't want a whole full belt, yellow belt of Corlexes that are, you know, not tired or, or whatever, you know. Uh, either side is going to have to be jammed up. So I doubled the capacity on the um, Pythoons to speed up that process because uh, these are, are fairly slow, even with four speed level ones. And of course, I got the sample cup here, direct feeding into the uh, gene extractor and this thing is very fast with just this a level one it's insanely fast one second craft but with the ulrichs it's a 1600 percent increase from that since this machine is so fast 
and you need 12 of the samples. I had to do a belt loop here because what's happening, uh, I had a priority and the priority was prioritizing the sample here. And the problem is that there is a buffer on the belt here as well as in the splitter. And that's a real pain because you have to wait and wait and wait so long to get enough rested Ulrichs in order to get them to pass through up to this machine to make the pups. I think that's what they're called, they're cubs? Yeah, the cubs. I keep calling them pups. So this belt loop here, even though it seems kind of janky, it actually helps minimize the amount of or Ulrichs that are sitting on this little stub over here. And there's about 10, 10 Ulrichs that get jammed into this splitter too. What happens is this machine will buffer completely and then the pups will, only like a couple pups will start popping. And again, this gets jammed up here. So I could have, um, for example, you'll see that I have, you know, it just ran here. What'll happen is I'll have a full inventory output here of the gene samples, and this machine will have a full output as well. Only it, that's the condition that has to occur in order for the Ulrichs to finally go uh, take this belt priority, priority side. And then only one gets through because this machine is so fast, all the Ulrichs on this buffer and in the splitter buffer, they go and they run, they run like crazy. And I have a full <laughs> amount plus there's gonna be more needed be in, in order to fill the buffers up again. So I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. I don't wanna wait. I don't want this to be, you know, jammed up. I, I want the, pop, the cubs, you know. So as you can see, I got like seven in here. This process is so slow. And the only way to speed this up is to have more Pythoons and more food. So this is not meant to be production, but these are the issues that you have to work with when you want to get the most out of a already, you know, stunted build. But I enjoy doing this stuff, trying to get something to work. And this is this runs while I'm doing other stuff, like planning the next episode. And I finally got the course faction in, and it really does simplify the build. So uh, over here, I had a pickup where it was picking up all the trash. And the old course faction recipe was soil, and it got separated, you know, the solid separator. That, all this trash got taken into the trash train area. There was like biomass and limestone. So this whole system now is simplified massively. As you can see, it's just one machine, uh, a plate to rods. And eventually when we get casting, the I think it's advanced casting, the rods will be casted from molten iron and I won't need to bring plate over here. It'll just be rods. And then it's rods to course faction. And I won't need this machine here. So you just bring the rods here. And then I have this water generator here. It's supplying water to the entire build of Tufras. And then a soil machine here. And I checked with the um, max rate calculator and it's all good. I did the exact same thing here with the Corlex only build. And I built this because I wasn't sure if I was going to need the Corlexes for some other process. And we will need them today because I'm going to set up the MK02 process for the Corlexes but I'm not gonna do that today. I'm just gonna set it up to get the spin up. You know, the ch it's a chance to get an MK02, that first process. Let's go over that now. So here from Matthew, you can see how huge this crap is gonna be to get the spike from the dingots, dingrits, and the, I think it's pineal, pineal gland from the uh, scondrix. This is how big this build is gonna be. So I finally got it all squared away. Now, I had to move this stuff over here because I needed all the room. <laughs> so I got a nice little building area here, a nice little planning area. And I'm going to be, you know, when we get to the Augs and the Vrauks, I kind of push the Vrauks back because it's I need the food and all that other crap. The Augs require the same thing we're going to need for Corlexes too. So we'll get into that in a second. But yeah, this is all the planning space that I need. This build is going to be insane. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the Coralex here uh, to get the MKO2. I'm gonna run down to the Coralex build. That's why I like to have them separate. I mean, you can see how big the builds are, they're crazy. So we need the food and 
uh, well, I got the food already. Water bill is not a problem. The Reina, I don't have, but I'm going to do a build specifically for that. I think, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to do a build. I'll, I'll pull my Reina build and bring it down and fire it up there. And then uh, we need to bring in salt. So the uh, three items that I'm going to need is bedding, the Reina, and the salt. And then we get the percent, half a percent chance to get an MKO2. All right, without further ado, let's get cracking on the Coralex MKO2 spin up. I'll let this run and we'll work on the Scondrix and the Dingrits. All righty, folks, I'm all set up here. Figured I'd get it all going, uh, get the belts in. It's a real, this is a spaghetti build, so I had to really work with it. And so let's just start it up. From what I got here, got the Reina's up here. And I already have course faction for the uh, Tufras, so it made sense to, you know, build it over here. And I had a, a lot of extra Reinas. I accidentally forgot to cap the chest. <laughs> Whoops! And I had like 800 extra Reinas. Not a big deal. So we'll let those go. Let's get some in here for some seeds. And then the Coralexes can have some and I'll get take care of the rest. All right, now I got the Corlex food and water barrels here. I did a quick side load and a splitter here. And over here, I'm just using an inserter to pick off because it's a mixed belt. So filter inserter for the food and boom and all good. So we'll get that going. We got the bedding and the salt here. I cut in an LTN stop. And we got fertilizer for the Rainers, Rainers to keep those going. There we go. So now we... Oh, and then I just need a Corlex. Oh, I got to bring the Corlexes over. All right, first, let's do... I wanted to do the speaker. All right, the speaker's wired up. And we need four in order to kickstart the bioprinting process. What it does is it... If you didn't see the recipe or don't remember it, it's four Corlexes or... Well, in this particular process, um, it's four of the creatures, Corlexes here. And so four to five, four to five, four to five, four to five. So you get one guaranteed every craft. So that's good. It's a long process. It's a very slow machine. So uh, there is the map marker there. Now let me see how I'm going to get these Coralexes in over here. All right. I had a case right here. I'm like, oh, there they are right there. <laughs> that's why I put this here, actually. So there goes the Coralexes in here. Oh, we got some fertilizer there. Um, that That's a long belt. Oh, boy. So how are we doing here? Um, oh, what is going on? Okay, oh, I see. Yeah, it's all jammed up. All right, there we go. It's going! Now, there is a... Okay, that didn't hit. Uh, there is a return on one half... A 50% chance to get one of the two Coralexes back. So that's why I got this case here, filtering the MKO2 and the 1. Because then I might as well use that one there. Otherwise, you have to loop it out and, you know, put it back on the belt. So, eh, you know, I'll leave it here. If, if it doesn't get consumed from the box, you know, just chuck it back into the Coralex generators over there. So there we go. We're up and running. All right, I'll meet you up by the uh, planning area. Well, I'll find a spot, and then we'll start working on the Scondrixes and all that crap. This might be a two-parter because there's a lot going on here. All right, let's get cracking.
Yay, our first Dingrits. Hey, look at that. Holy cow, what did we get out of these? Oh, oh, we get one to three. So that means I had, instead of, I got right in between there on the first one. Oh, I got three. Heck yeah. Cool. So I'm going to put these in here as modules. Uh, where did they go? Where are they? There they are. All right. This thing is so slow starting up. So right now, it's uh, <laughs> 0.45 craft speed. Yeah, I was waiting. Well, I was doing other stuff and whatnot. This build is a nightmare. Now, Helmod, I, sometimes Helmod is stupid. The Tufras, as you can see, are run out. And the, I don't know why they're, why they recommended only, well, why Helmod calculated only one Tufra per, for this food machine here. I, I'm, th I think it was wrong. I had a feeling, you know, I'm like, no way. Tufras are slow. So I'm like, well, let me go with it. Now, uh, what I'm going to do here most likely is pull the Tufras out of here and train them in from a separate build so i'll do that off screen though because i had a feeling this was going to be a problem and i have two for coming from i i do have a corlex build here i'll show you so here's the corlex build by the way i finally got the four i need to start the corlex mk02 spin-up process we'll do that next episode and i left the alarm on if you caught it and it came on while i was building so the Coral X require the Tufra here, and I do have a case of 500 in here. So I could supplement that build with this one, and this Tufra build here, because the Coral Xs right now are not being used. Now there's some strange recipes here that use the Coral X, so <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever going to do this, but we get the Filled Comb Coral X MK01 with an Arquid MK03, and then we get an Arquid Nest MK03 out of it. Oh, and this, okay, this is what we need for the uh, spin up for Arquid Egg MK03s. This is what we're going to have to do with the Arquid MK02s, most likely. We're going to have to have an MK02 version of the nest. So, in a sense, this build is not needed. From what I can see, I'm going to leave it here, though. But I have the Tufras here. What I'm going to do is train them in up here. And then belt them down to supplement this thing. Uh, because, yeah, I think... I don't know. Maybe I screwed up on something in Helmut. I'll have to look at it. The other issue here is the Skondrixes. Um, oh, I do have a bot network in here. And it's another issue I wanted to talk about before I cut back. Uh, I'm going to do another quick speed up here of the render and stuff. Uh, although I'm thinking of doing that off screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have the, the caged um, wolf... Render it and also offer the, you know, the MK01 to the network so that we can spin up MK02s later on in the bio hub. It makes it easier. And then the render, obviously, we're going to get two things here. I'll showcase this next episode, I guess. We get the Dingrit spike, and then we also have the pelt. So I'll stockpile the pelt, and I'm going to have to go to the bio or the uh, body parts area, and I'll have to cut in a filter for excess dingrit pelts but we're going to stockpile these two items here offer them to the network and then i'll have to have a spillover so over here by the tsm uh pickup here um oh let's see what we got oh there's one now we're at 500 percent half a craft speed <laughs> half full so over oh good i'm glad this isn't here uh all right i almost got run over by a train i kept that in so here's the the blood pickup and tsm handles that as well as the body parts and oh yeah i forgot about this so i was like wait a minute i need the meat and guts and bones for the food the dingrit food okay so we got three items already here and i decided well why don't i just belt this over here and the meat is used for the scondrixes only so I did a long belt over here and combined it with this uh, case. And I wired it up such that it won't go over 700 because I, you know, obviously if they're not being rendered, if the, this whole thing will run, you know, if, 
well, if we do the pineal gland, then this, the Skondrix will run. And if we do the Dingret tooth, then that, this whole thing will run. So I have to account for, you know, that uh, situation, I guess. So I have a bot network. And here's the tricky part about these cages. So we need the cages, empty cages for the Skondrix. And the rendering uh, kicks out the cage. No problem. So I handle that there. This one here requires the Skondrix. And it kicks out the, the cage. Not only that, but we're going to have a kick out over here of the cage. So there's going to be, there's a kick out for the breeding. There's a kick out for the growth, you know, the uh, maturing. A kick out for the render. For there's So there's one, two, three kick outs. Basically, well, four with the Skondrixes. So I put in a passive provider here. And I belt it across this way, uh, filtering the empty cage. So I'm going right into this case here. And they're all passive providers. I don't need them to be, you know, the purple case, the active. Uh, this is not getting food. Yeah, so the, the tufers are a problem. I knew it. So I got a bot network in here. Uh, I'll probably have to put another one over here. And that's just for the cages. I, I, I don't like... I want to use belts, but this got pretty spaghettified. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um... So yeah, the two furs I'll probably I'll leave them in here, just for us, just because they're running, you know. Um, but I'll, I'll see how it runs before I jump the gun on that. But I think I'm gonna bring the two furs in, because this guy's starved out with food here. Yeah, it's working now. So I'll set this up here, the render up, and then next episode I'll go over that a little bit briefly. We'll set up the Coralex MKO2s because I want those to run for a while, and we got the sugar that we have to do the sugar cube. Once we get the sugar cube and, you know, the other specialty stuff, we'll be golden on the, the Coralex MKO2. And that'll bridge into the AUG MKO2 with the energy drinks because we're going to need those to spin those little guys up. All right. So I think I'll end it here. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the new creature spin up. I'm really excited about it. This was a real tough build. I just have, to, you know, I'm, you know, learning it here. And hopefully I'll apply this to other builds similar to this where we need two creatures, you know, one creature for another, and then it, all this mess comes. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.